Excerpts from The Santa Land Diaries, Part 2, written by David Sedaris, performed by Anthony Fleece. All the Santas have different routines. Some want the children's names. So as you're leading the youngsters from the magic tree, you say, What was your name again? It's right on the tip of my mind where I can't get at it. Then they say their name, and you say, That's right, Van. You're Van. See, I didn't recognize you with that turtleneck. That's new, isn't it? And it's always new, because they grow so fast, they are always needing larger clothes. Then you lead them to Santa's door and say, Let me just check to see if he's ready. And you poke your head in and whisper, Van! Then half the time you'll usher the child into the house, and Santa will say, Stan, it's so good to see you! It's hard when you have three or four kids in a group. It's hard keeping the names straight. And some of the names are names I've never heard. This afternoon, I was photo elf for Santa Howard. Santa Howard uses names and sits the kids on his lap and asks if they've been good and what they want for Christmas. And then he asks what they plan to leave him on Christmas Eve. And they say cookies and milk, and he asks... What kind of cookies? And they say chocolate chip or whatever. And he demands the photo elf to say, Chocolate chip? That is Santa's favorite kind of cookie. I don't mind saying it, but I must have said it 60 times today. 22,000 people came to see Santa today, and not all of them were well behaved. Today I witnessed fist fights and vomiting and magnificent tantrums. Once the line gets long, we break it into four different lines because Anyone in their right mind would leave if they knew it would take over two hours to see Santa. Uh, two hours? You could see a movie in two hours. Standing in a two-hour line makes people worry that they are not living in a democratic nation. I was sent into the hallway to direct the second phase of the line. The hallway was packed with people, and all of them seemed to stop me with a question. Which way to the down escalator? Which way to the elevator? The patio restaurant? Gift wrap? The women's restroom? Trim a tree? There was a line for Santa and a line for the women's bathroom. And one woman, after asking me a thousand questions already, asked me, Which is the line for the women's bathroom? And I shouted, I thought it was the line with all the women in it. And she said, I'm going to have you fired. I had two people say that to me today. I'm going to have you fired. Go ahead, be my guest. I'm wearing a green velvet costume. It doesn't get any worse than this. Who do these people think they are? I'm gonna have you fired. And I want to lean over and say, I'm gonna have you killed. This morning, I got stuck at the magic window, which is really boring. I'm supposed to stand around and say, Step on the magic star and you can see Santa. I said that for a while, and then I started saying, Step on the magic star and you can see Cher. And people got excited, so I said, Step on the magic star and you can see Mike Tyson. Some people in the other line, the line to sit on Santa's lap, got excited and cut through the gate so they could stand on my magic star. Then they got angry when they looked through the magic window and saw Santa rather than Cher or Mike Tyson. But what did they honestly expect? Is Cher so hard up for money that she would agree to stand behind a two-way mirror at Macy's? The angry people must have said something to management because I was taken off the Magic Star and sent to Elf Island, which is really boring because all you do is stand around and act merry. This morning I worked as an exit elf, telling people in a loud voice, This way out of Santa Land! A woman was standing at one of the cash registers paying for her pictures while her son lay beneath her, kicking and heaving, having a tantrum. The woman said, Riley, if you don't start behaving yourself, Santa's not going to bring you any of those toys you asked for. The child said, He is too going to bring me toys, liar. He already told me. The woman grabbed my arm and said, You there, elf. Tell Riley that if he doesn't start behaving immediately, then Santa is going to change his mind and bring him coal for Christmas. I said that Santa changed his policy and no longer traffics in coal. Instead, if you're bad, he comes to your house and steals things. I told Riley that if he didn't behave himself, Santa was going to take away his TV and all his electrical appliances and leave him in the dark. All your appliances, Riley, including the refrigerator, your food is going to spoil and smell bad. It is going to be so cold and dark where you are, you're going to wish you never heard the name Santa. The woman got a worried look on her face and said, 
All right, that's enough. I said he's going to take your car and your furniture and all your towels and blankets and leave you with nothing. The mother said, no, that's enough, really. This afternoon, I was stuck being photo elf for Santa Santa. I don't know his real name. No one does. During most days, there's a slow period when you sit around the house and talk to Santa. And most of them are nice guys, and we sit around and laugh. But Santa Santa takes himself a bit too seriously. I asked him where he lives, Brooklyn or Manhattan. And he said, Why, I live at the North Pole with Mrs. Claus. I asked, what he does for the rest of the year, and he said, I make toys for all the children. Santa Santa sits and waves and jingles his bell sash when no one is there. He actually recited the night before Christmas, and it was just the two of us in the house. No children, just us. He says, Oh, little elf, little elf, straighten up those mantle toys for Santa. I remind him that I have a name. Crumpet. And then I straightened up the stuffed animals. Oh, little elf, little elf, bring Santa a throat lozenge. So I brought him a throat lozenge. Santa Santa has an elaborate little act for the children. He talks to them and gives a hearty chuckle and rings his bells. And then he asks them to name their favorite Christmas carol. Most of them say Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Santa then asks if they'll sing it for him. The children are shy and don't want to sing out loud, so Santa says, Oh, little elf, little elf, help young Brenda here sing that favorite carol of hers. Then I have to stand there and sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which I hate. This evening I was sent to be a photo elf in house number two. The camera is hidden in the fireplace, and I take the picture by pressing a button on the end of a cord. Most elves will hold up a stuffed animal over the fireplace and say, Look at my little animal friend and smile! Oftentimes, the parents will settle the child on Santa's lap and then start grooming. I've seen mothers pull cans of hairspray from their pocketbooks and spray the child's hair as if Santa were a false prop made of cement. Hairspray shoots into Santa's eyes and he winces in pain. Once a child starts crying, it's all over. The parents had planned to send these pictures as cards or store them away until the child is grown and can lie, claiming to remember the experience. Tonight, I saw a woman slap and shake her crying child. She yelled, Rachel, get on that man's lap and smile or I'll give you something to cry about. Then she sat Rachel on Santa's lap. And I took the picture, which supposedly means on paper that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be, that everything is snowy and wonderful. It's not about the child or Santa or Christmas or anything, but the parents' idea of a world they cannot make work for them. You just listened to excerpts from The Santa Land Diaries, Part 2, written by David Sedaris, performed by Anthony Fleece.